Now I want to talk a little bit about process, because I want to show you something. We've got a, um, uh, an application here by a Las Vegas company, and uh, there's been a lot of excitement in the newspaper about our exciting new entertainment district that's going to come, it's just going to be so spectacular. And this is really, you know, the, uh, the older I get, you know, it's the miracle of cosmetics, and this is the miracle of marketing. Because I'm going to show you a little bit about who Paragon Gaming is. So, of course, as you all may have heard, Paragon Gaming, it's, it's, uh, it comes from a family business, and it's uh, um, uh, the background is Luxor, Circus Circus, hair, all of that sort of thing. But Paragon Gaming is, that is not what Paragon Gaming does. Paragon Gaming seeks a different market. They have a different business model and they do different work. So you may imagine with this Las Vegas royalty that we're going to be seeing something like this. Uh, something palatial. But the reality is that they have a different kind of model. The growth in casinos in the United States has been on a completely different profile. It has been on Native Indian reservations. So the first project that Paragon Gaming developed in their years was the Augustine Casino. This is a picture of their first project. I think this opened in 2002. So that's it. Bing, what do you think? <laughs> They found a, a woman in uh, Los, uh, Los Angeles who was the sole survivor of a Native Indian tribe because there's a certain kind of skill involved in really developing uh, an American Native Indian casino. And uh, they set her up with her own casino which they um, managed, built and managed for her. And, and there you go. That is one of their four properties. Um, the second property that they developed now that was in, um, so, this is the uh, Eagle River Casino and Travel Plaza uh, in Whiteport, Alberta, population 9100. Um, there are 50 RV uh, parking slot stalls and you can get a free shower with the gas bill. <laughs> Then they, uh, they built uh, the River Cree. This is their moving up. All of these are native Aboriginal um, reserve casinos. I'm not saying that as a criticism. What I'm saying is this is not the Las Vegas palatial luxury. This is not the business model that they pursue. Um, every business has its own DNA and, it, and it, it, it does what it does. This is, this is the... Uh, uh, casino resort where the um, man was murdered in the parking lot two years ago. I just want to show you, uh, this is a review of, uh, that I found uh, on TripAdvisor. This was somebody who went to that hotel and uh, he, he, although he said the rooms were fantastic and the uh, gym, the gym facilities are really, really good. They're the best that he'd ever seen anywhere, but he left. And this was uh, uh, one of the, this was one of the reasons, and there was another reason. So you can get a sense. <laughs> that was before the murder. I think he could sense something was coming. So this is, and these are the three other properties in addition to Edgewater Casino that Paragon Gaming has. How did this company get this contract? And how did it get this contract without any competitive bidding? In Missouri, they also had an application, I think in November of 2010, they applied for um, a casino. Missouri is a little bit less sophisticated than Vancouver. In Missouri, there has to be a full public hearing. In Missouri, there are, there's competitive biddings. There are three 
shortlisted companies. In Missouri, they got senior members of the community to come out to engage the public, to draw the public out so that they could get real public engagement. And in Missouri, which is, you know, not quite at our level, they had a referendum. And in Missouri, the vote, the referendum passed, 61% of the winning community, the winning community passed it by 61%, which was a big indicator for the Gaming Commission that there was strong public support in that community for that casino to go in. And so that was a successful um, applicant. And in Missouri, Paragon Gaming did, lost the vote five zero. But in Vancouver, with no competition, with nobody else in sight, we just signed a 70-year lease. And where have we been? When were we asked? I don't know about you, but I'm not very happy about Vancouver's urban planning being done in Victoria. Yeah, fair